Welcome back, everybody. It is tea time. It's evening tea time, and that's right. And I have returning guests again. So I have Charles Breakfield and Rox Berkeley back in the house. And they were on on season four, and they wanted to come back and share their good news that they have some more books out. So we're going to talk about those books tonight. But before we do any of that, we're going to get you over to Miss Liz's YouTube channel. Give that a quick subscribe. Ring that little doorbell and see these tea times at any time. Uh, you can watch them when you're driving in your car, uh, when you're at home family members a getaway you can watch it at any time at any pace so before we get started we're going to do all the goodies we're going to do disclaimers we're going to do bios and then we're going to get these two in here and we're going to spill some different kind of tea tonight so tonight's tea is going to be tenacity engaging agree agreeable trusted entrepreneurizing enterprising and adventuresome so that's the kind of tea we're going to be serving tonight so don't worry about the beverage if you guys want to have a beer you want to have a glass of wine you want to have a coffee glass of juice you guys are more than welcome to do that so let's get started with the disclaimer disclaimer for miss liz's tea time live show miss liz myself is going live using Streamyard. before leaving a comment please grant Streamyard permission to see your name at streamyard.com please be advised that the content brought forward for any tea time show hosted by myself miss liz is always brought forward in good faith However, may bring forth dialogues and opinions that are not representative of my platform. The facts and information are perceived to be accurate at the giving time of airing. All tea time guests and audience participants are responsible for using their good judgment and taking any action that may relate to the discussion. The content brought forward may include discussions for the for some where they may be emotionally at risk. It is significant to know that the show is engaging in discussions to offer and inspire awareness and connection and is not providing therapeutic advice. If you have any questions about the disclaimer or the panelist discussion, you may freely contact me, Miss Liz, at my email at bookingmissliz at gmail.com. Moving forward, should you choose to voluntarily participate in tonight's show in any aspect, I myself, Miss Liz, welcomes you. And should you decide that this, note, this show is not made for you at this time, I respect those wishes and we'll see you at a later date, at a later date in time. Again, all tea time shows on Thursday are done at 3 and 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. If you see it on a Monday or Tuesday, it's a rescheduled tea time or a surprise tea time that Miss Liz has found. So let me get Charles in here and, and Rox in here. And we're going to spill some different kind of tea with you guys tonight. And Miss Liz is going to sip on her tea um, and to heal my little dry throat here. But before that, we're going to give you a little bit on who my guests are. Breakfield is a technology expert in security and networking, voice, and anything digital. He enjoys writing, studying World War II history, travel, and culture exchanges. Charles is a fan of wine tasting, wine making, Harley riding, cooking, extravaganzas, and woodworking. Berkeley is a technology professional who excels at optimizing technology and business investments. She works with customers all over the world, focusing on optimized customer experiences. Rox writes white paper and documentaries, but found she has a marked preference for writing fiction. Together, these, these Texan authors create award-winning stories that resonate with males and females, as well as young and experienced adults. They bring a fresh new view to technology possibilities today and exciting stories. So you can visit their website at www.ignaseries.com. And we're going to get them in here, and I'm going to sip on some tea. Welcome, guys. Oh, I don't have any sound. Why do I have a sound? Let me see more sorry about that miss liz so hello thank you very much it's so nice to see you and so nice to hear you now that we got we're de <laughs> de 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 demitted so uh thank you <clears throat> well thank you guys for joining me again uh i know it's a mouthful when we first open the show but we have to put those disclaimers out there and protect our rights and all of that stuff right so uh, of course 
for all of the all of the listeners out there that haven't seen you guys on season uh, season four and got to know you a little bit, let's let's go back a little bit. So I'm going to start with you, Rox, and then I'll jump into you, Charles. So Rox, who were you as a uh, as a little girl, and who are you now? And then Charles, the same question: Who are you as a little guy, and who are you now? Well, as a as a little kid, I was kind of the instigator for doing fun projects in the neighborhood with all my little friends like taking paint out of the garage and painting a swing set when I was four years old. And we had more paint on us than we ever did on the swing set. So I kind of left that instigator thing behind me and decided that I really wanted to listen to people more. So I went down the path of customer experience so that I could listen to people and get their viewpoints and help guide them in not only technology uh, purchases, and utilization, but also to kind of point out different things from a process versus a procedure kind of thing. So that's kind of where I'm at today. And, you know, I like to have fun. I just like my tea. Well, I like girls that like tea, right? <laughs> so Charles, who were you as a young guy? Um, I guess the uh, instigator is probably a, a, a fair word. Um, my, uh, <clears throat> Whenever we were laughing and cutting up in the uh, the back of the of the, of the uh, VW microbus heading down the uh, the autobahn in Germany, <clears throat> if we got too rambunctious, my dad would lean around and use the old finger on the um, on top of your your, your skull to kind of give you a good wrapping and uh, it settled down. Um, we got very good at grabbing my youngest brother, my other brother and I, and holding him and letting him take the beating. <clears throat> so um, it was always uh, something that was a uh, yeah. Well, not a proud moment, yeah, but uh, <laughs> uh, but he, it, it's uh, it's good to have somebody else take the rap for you. Okay, I'll, I'll just tell you that. <clears throat> so since you guys have been on season four, because you guys were on May 4th last year, and the reason that I remember that is because, Charles, you had your little R2-D2 little guy. Or... Exactly. Yep, he did. Right, right behind him. I remember yep. the date. I was like May fourth. That's when I had these guys on because I remember Charles doing that, and that. So, but what has happened since then? Wow, since that point in time, we've actually released three different books. Um, yes, three different books. So we released the first book in the brand new series, Enigma Heirs, which is behind us, called Enigma Tracer. And that book came out and it, you know, it was, it was ready to go. Um, we also released um, after that, The Killer Enigma. And that's part of the Magnolia Bluff Crime Chronicles that we do with a group of other authors called the Underground Authors. And we are into our third season of that particular series where each author writes a book a month that has the same place. You know, it's in the Texas Hill Country, and people are just dying to get in. They're all cozy mysteries. So, you know, that's what happens when you have a cozy. And then we also have released um, book number two, An Enigma Tracer. Um, I'm sorry, book number two, Enigma Forced, which released about two weeks ago. And so now book one and book two in the Enigma Heirs trilogy are available. Uh, perfect for Mother's Day, Father's Day, you know, just a fun little thrilling technology thriller adventure. Yeah, but the, probably a better fit for Mother's Day would be the uh, um, trusted friends and lovers. Wouldn't you agree? Oh, I, I would. I forgot to mention that one. We also went a little bit off of our normal scant, and we decided that we would take our our backstories, which are really very well-developed short stories, and pull them into a selected collection called Trusted Friends and Lovers. And that is an ideal, you're right, Charles, yeah. ideal gift for Mother's for Mother's Day, any mother or or your lover. You know, it works well both ways. That's See, right. and I did my homework again because I was like, I hope they say three books because I found three new books and I was like, I didn't <laughs> see those ones before. And then when you guys said three, I was like, yes, I did it right. I got them. <laughs> I got all of them. So <laughs> tell us a little bit about each book. And what's the storyline behind them? And who who's the character? Because I remember the last time we talked, we talked about the characters a lot. 
on how the characters like to be playful in that. So let's talk about the first one that we talked about was the killer enigma. So let's talk about that one first. So the, uh, the killer enigma, we have uh, um, a young lady um, and her, her husband. They've just been married for a year and they're looking to be able to uh, get back to a place that hardly anybody knows them, but they have great friends there. They're very uh, serious. Um, she is a, a world-renowned model and wants to get away from the uh, uh, the paparazzi, the you know, light bulbs, the uh, the endless uh, hounding. And um, you can do that in this uh, this town, this quaint town in Texas called Magnolia Bluff. And her and her husband decide that we found a place they want to build. And you know, the problem with this uh, this city is that there's always something being dug up that you don't really want to know about. And this happens at this point in time. So they dig up something and, you know, the mystery goes on. But it's a fun little story about resiliency, creativity, and... Um, iron frying pans. And iron frying pans. Yeah, that's the other part of it. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's a little bit of action in there because every, anybody knows what an iron frying pan is, right? <laughs> Yeah, exactly. That's right. And and Joe knows how to wield that frying pan like crazy. I love it. It, it kind of brought me back to my grandma and grandpa when my grandma used to tell my grandpa, you better behave or you know where the pans come. Exactly. <laughs> so let's get into the second one that you mentioned, guys. Um, So that would be Enigma Forest and yeah. Enigma Tracer together. Okay. So that is, again, book one and two of the Enigma Heirs trilogy. And they are the next generation of the R Group and Cats teams, which was our original main 12-book series. But we decided to use their, their children, their offspring, and bring them forward. So it's, it's faster-paced. It is geared more toward, a, I would say, a younger adult, as well as a mature adult, but a younger adult, because these are some tough characters these you know one of the heroes is a woman one of the heroes is a man but these are no nonsense people i'm not going to take anything you know they they really know how to you know kick kick butt and take names i can say that on here right is that okay, okay. oh yeah yeah you, you miss liz's tea is a flow right right we just spill anything that comes that's why we love being here go ahead charles but, but the, uh, the next generation it's uh, for the uh, for the the, the 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 exiting generation they always have the same anxiety for the next uh the, for the heirs it's always did i teach them enough did they did they learn all the lessons did i did i give them everything they needed to be able to survive um, and and think through problems. No, I didn't teach you everything, but did I? Did we teach you to think and and adapt? And that's sort of the uh, the stretching that the uh, the fourth generation, the heirs, have to do because um, this their first big case in uh, in Tracer um, is a is a seasoned um, pro. He's a uh, ecological gangster, and in that book uh, he, he's brought the justice, but one of his brothers, half brothers. He isn't grabbed, and so um, the fight continues in forced. And he again is an is a, a criminal with a uh, wily, um, very um, very astute at uh, dodging uh, uh, the law. And it's the uh, the kind of challenge that uh, it makes the uh, the heirs stretch. And and uh, what are you going to do next? You know, one line we use in there is like, um, just about the time you think you've got them. They don't conform to the plan we have to capture them. That's just, you know, how rude is that, okay? But, you know, uh, criminals today, especially with the digital landscape the way it is, they're insidious about how they want to achieve their end goals. They'll go to, to you know, links that are unimaginable to most of us. They'll leverage cryptocurrency. They'll do drug running. They'll do, um, you know, human trafficking. Um, and so it's it's something that, quite honestly, it's scary as can be because it's far too real. Yeah, but it, it's where it, it's what the uh, the criminals always do. It's like that's where the money is, and and uh, it's uh, it's unfortunate, but uh, they don't see any problems with it. And so um, the R group errors do, 
And so they, you know, it, it's it's in their DNA. It's what they were brought up, in, and that's the the torch that they carry forward for the R group, um, social justice, um, justice to bringing uh, criminals to uh, that think that hey, you can't touch me, and uh, I'm going to launder my profits using cryptocurrency. No, no, not with these people uh, dogging you, um, and they've got the resources to do it. Well, and we talked about this when you guys were on the last time was, you know, corruption is blindness, right? Like, it, it, it's like it puts a blind shield on you and you don't see the darkness that's out there. You know, it's out there. You know, you're doing wrong. You know, you're being corrupt. But the dollar sign is blinding you. Yeah. Well, and the worst part is, to be honest, Miss Liz, is that a lot of people are too naive to even look under the surface. And, you know, it's it's to a degree like the, the wolf in sheep's clothing. There is a evil under there. If you just ask a couple of questions, don't accept everything at 100 percent face value. And that that's our biggest worry yeah. is that people people are taking advantage of. But, but the, the real heartbreak in, in force <clears throat> is the um, the desperateness. The, the I want to go, I, you know, I, I'm being persecuted. I, I don't have, you know, there, there's nothing for my children to, uh, to hear where I'm at. They, they borrow money, they, they leverage everything, and they, they pay their money in good faith to people who have no faith, no goodness in them. And yeah. they get fleeced and they're left stranded at, at, uh, in some country if they're lucky. Um, if they're unlucky, they get forced into the narcotics trade because um, they've got a few extra muscles. Or worse, they're sold into uh, um, uh, human trafficking for somebody's uh, rent by the hour. So, well, you know, these, these are the kind of things that we want to be able to um, um, examine. And how do you fight stuff like that? And and that's where we exercise the uh, the air group's airs. Well, and through your stories as well, your books, you guys kind of give awareness as well. You're educating through the stories. If people are reading the stories and, and taking the time to you know, look into the words. Uh, you know, we have a lot of people that just skimmy through books that just speed read, right? And they don't take in the knowledge and 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 the education that's there. Uh, you know, there's great novels out there, great love novels out there, romance novels that have storylines of certain kinds of abuse, certain kinds of, uh, you know, awareness on uh, trafficking, like you said, Charles. Uh, you know, and these are topics that I've had on Tea Time is sex trafficking and that because it's right in front of us and our eyes are being blinded because of the dollar sign or of the fame laid or it, the grass is greener on the other side. And then you see that the grass is not green. The grass is actually brown on the other side. Like, you, you know what I mean? Um, yeah. But I want to I want to get into the last book because the last book actually kind of comes into what I'm saying, right, about relationships and stuff like that. And when I found this this book, I was like, hmm, now this one I want to know a little bit more about. Just the title of it, you know. Uh, and Rock, your word that you gave me was trusted. Uh, so, you know, and then you have the trusted friends and lovers. So th there's a lot of trust in 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 the stories. So let's, let's know a little bit about the, that book. So trusted friends and lovers came about because we had dabbled in writing short stories, which were backstories to characters that were in the book. You know, there's elements of people and characters in a book that just don't fit into the novel. And so it leaves gaps as to, hmm, that's an interesting character. I'd like to know more about them. Or what happened to this character? They look like they should have had a future. Or Ooh, they look like they should have been done in. Um, so uh, we we had written some short stories and and presented them as ebooks, which is fine, but it, it doesn't go to all markets. You know, it's it people. Some people really still like paper. Some people still like Audible. And so we we took them all, the ones that that we considered the primo ones that focused on trust being an element that's critical to any relationship, you know, whether it's a friend's relationship, whether it's a romantic relationship, whether it's a marriage, whatever it is, trust is probably the most critical element in our opinion. So 
you know, love is certainly important too, but that that's a different issue. You really can't have lasting love if you don't have trust in, again, our opinion. So we took those stories and expanded them as individual short stories to give them more depth. And so they, they cover a gambit of certainly women's contemporary would be their main uh, theme or genre, but there's action adventure in them. There's a little bit of mystery, there's surprise, and, and there's a lot of, I would say, history as far as traditions, yeah. what traditions impact uh, different kinds of, of relationships. Yeah, maybe some uh, a little bit of a smattering of different cultures. Uh, and sometimes that gives you, uh, lends a different perspective to uh, the value of trust. You know, uh, we've got two ladies that are trying to uh, struggle to get to uh, uh, into school and uh, and pay for um, pay for an education, and they're not succeeding. And so one of them says, "I'll know, I'll help," and it looks like betrayal. But it's not betrayal. It's more of I have a really different kind of idea. It's a left turn. This is a left turn that I I'd like to take with you because you're my friend, um, and because I think we can make it succeed because it's so different. And and you know. You know, Miss Liz, just from from being around for a couple of years, that sometimes the unique approach is the one that gives you the best throat. If you have somebody that you can trust to cover your back while you're doing it, you yeah. know, and so so that's a lot of how we approach it. Yeah. Uh, and and traditions does have a big uh, perspective in it. We mix European traditions with American traditions around holidays and how that differs, and yet it's it's much more genuine much more poignant. Well, and, and exercising the uh, trust in multiple scenarios, different kind of complexions of the of the story gave us the, uh, the, the wide ranging depth of the story. They don't all sound the same, like, okay, boy meets girl, you know, um, you know, we have a problem, okay, they get over it, done. Um, that's not very satisfying. So we wanted to be able to uh, explore it from, uh, from different perspectives with uh, um, with the idea that um, how do you win? How do you win trust? How do you win back trust? And what happens when uh, you know the uh, nothing seems to be working? So is this like a friend turned into a lover kind of story, or is it lovers turned into friends? Like is it reverse? Because sometimes you know you become the lover and then you become the friend. So and and you make a great point, Miss Liz. They're all each a little different. As Charles said, they're not cookie cutter. So one of them is is two girls that are trying to help one another earn an education, and um, you know they're they're doing you know working double shifts and doing all of these things, and and um, it does feel like betrayal when one person does th something without asking, and yet in the long run they pull together. They do decide that they are on the same path. And, and it together is the only way they think they can possibly win. Now, whether they win or not, you're going to have to read the story, but that's a different issue. Um, well, yeah, and we, we got another example where we've got a young couple that are uh, trying to explore their, their relationship. And um, one of them has an event, a moment in her life that is so horrific that um, everything is just has turned to ash. At that right, that at that moment, and she runs, and the trust that she has with her male to bring her back, and have her, you know, come back from the uh, from the, the, um, the throes of, uh, uh, of of this particular emotional hurdle, um, is something that teaches her about herself and about them. So that's the kind of exercise we talk about. When we say you know, trust between people. Yeah, it's between people. And some of them are friends who become lovers. Some of them are lovers who become more than lovers and become, you know, fully committed partners. So it, it's, it does all differ, but it's not all necessarily a lover's kind of thing. It is friends. Uh, and friends friends have a certain place in the world. You probably have a best friend that you met when you were in seventh or eighth grade of school that has been the longtime friend that knows everything, everything that's in that closet that you don't share with the rest of the world. And yet that's probably the one of the strongest bonds you have as a friend. 
So it's those kinds of things that we explore across the board. So it's kind of a fun, it's a fun book. So trusted friends and lovers, um, you know, we we're looking for feedback. Um, we, we had considered a second book maybe next year or the year after where we actually get to interview people on their relationships and how they formed their relationships. And we thought that would be kind of fun, but I want to get feedback on this one first and see how it is. Cause it, 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 um, it is different for us. We, you know, we've been known for thrillers, action adventure, technology thrillers, and, and we like that genre and we, we're good at that genre. Um, but, but we're also people. And so we thought people would like people. Well, and that's, and that's why when I, when I seen that, I was like, whoa, this is completely different than what they're used to writing. So I want to know a little bit more about this one, more than the other two, because the other two are, are they like, um, what was the word that you use? The offspring of your 12, 12 set collection, a series. So now are you making the offspring of those 12? Um, so the original 12, yes. The, the R group was, the, okay, let's get a history lesson going. Okay, right. in, in 1939, three friends in Poland escaped. And they escaped and, and took a copy of the Enigma machine to Switzerland. And they figured out how it worked and they formed a dynasty called the R group. And that was considered a family business. And so the three friends aren't aren't actually related other than friends and history. Um, so they formed this group, though, and they've made it a closed corporation, a closed family group. And so over that time, from 1939 until modern day, you know, they've gotten married, they've had children, they've, you know, gone through whatever paces um, they do, but they're in the safety of escaping Poland which was part of their impetus to, to get out and to fight back against tyranny. And that's the foundation, the moral moral code of the group is to fight tyranny. So they formed the information dynasty. Then they passed it to their, their, their offspring and offspring. So those people form modern day, our group, that really is the focus of the contemporary um, Enigma series, the 12 books in the Enigma series. The big, uh, the big challenge for them, and it's always the, it's almost always the same. There's always somebody from the uh, the dark side, whether it be the uh, you know the Germans invading Poland or uh, the Soviets that uh, you know run rampant, or it's uh and now it's the uh, the cyber bad guys from the dark net that are, you know, they just they they change names, they have a different complexion, but they're still you know uh, um, trying to steal money. Um, ruin other people's lives. And the R group, because of their history of fighting against tyranny, because of their um, lineage of, uh, you know, uh, we fought back and this is how you do that. Um, and it's a, it's a, it's an issue um, from them personally, as well as professionally. They have, they feel uh, obligated to uh, help governments, um, large corporations, um, dry cleaners. I mean, uh, just about anything that, uh, uh, that, uh, that somebody says, I need help to be able to, uh, you know, put the wheels back on this particular uh, scenario. And that's that's what the R group does, because now the world is all digital. And the, um, um, the weapon of choice is always the computer. And so when the when the Enigma series stopped at book 12, and that was really <laughs> my fault, because I just couldn't bear to do a book 13. I just, you know. You don't do 13. You just don't do it. <laughs> you just skip 13, right? It's like an elevator. An elevator doesn't have floor 13, right? You... <laughs> exactly. So we decided we wanted to go to the next generation. So these are their offspring. So the R group that did all the Enigma series, um, you know, we had introduced their offspring during that series. They've grown up. And so they were put in charge of the R group and the cats team, which was an offshoot that we introduced in the series. And um, so as Charles said, do they have enough background? Do they have enough education? Do they have enough to win. morality to keep the good goodness flowing and not fall prey to the dark side? Because as you said, Miss Liz, money talks, money's seductive. 
And so even the best people can be seduced by by money and power. And we've seen that across everything. Yeah. Nothing seduces like money and power. Nothing. Well, and you, you, you I, like I tell my kids, you got to have a brain, right? You got to, you got to really listen to your intuition because sometimes something that sounds really too good to be true, boy, oh boy, you better start running. You're, you're not walking, you're running. That's what I tell my kids. Like, because I, you know, doing these podcasts and that and meeting incredible people, I've had some opportunities and I'm just like, oh, I'm not sure if I want to go down that route because, you know, that path just might not take me where I want to go. <laughs> And it might just take me off of the tea completely and I'll be doing something that I'm not, that's not feeding my soul. Right. And, and that's what you guys have done is you stayed on the path with your collection, with your series is you stayed on track. Like, you know, you, you, you kept writing. Uh, we have a couple questions that have come in. So I just want to get those out to you guys and then we're going to get into your tea. So we have a question here. How long have you guys been writing together? Um, just about a dozen years. So we, well, yes, no, the series and this and the um, fiction for about a dozen years. We actually ended up uh, working together <laughs> for corporate America at a couple of different companies. And so we did uh, techno manuals. We did workshops. We created workshops on technology and we worked with um, together. We worked in three different manufacturers Um uh, over the course of careers, kind of leapfrogged. It was very, very funny how that ended up. But th so that's how long we've been doing it. But we've been writing fiction for about a dozen years now. Yeah. Well, what happened was that she would get some place. She'd go, come on, come on, come on, come on. You know, jump, jump. You, know, you, you can make the distance. I, I, all right, you sure? All right, go. <laughs> and then, right? then I get some place and then I, I called her and said, come on, come on. I got, we got a place for you. You come over here. And, and so we would do, uh, we did that, uh, uh, several times and uh um it just uh it's good working with uh, somebody as uh um brilliant as uh um Ms. yeah Rose. it has to do with trust you could trust me oh i can trust her yeah. see how that works it's yeah. the trust thing yeah. back to the dress you can trust me to say that yeah, she's brilliant that's all right <laughs> well and, and you, you need that right in a partnership you need that in a, in a friendship right you need that trust yeah. you, you can't move forward if you don't have it you know yeah. trust it trust is foundation exactly right and thank you for the question whoever whoever submitted that thank you yeah well, well we have a bunch of questions coming in from all different platforms here they're private messaging me a lot of people like to stay in the secret lately today i don't know why they don't want to show who they are but that's what they do right because in stream you have to verify who you are so they don't want to come in the studio and that's okay uh we have another question uh what was the hardest book that you guys wrote together to write Mm. Um, it has to be the most recent one, Enigma Forced. It was really hard because there are some horrible things in that book that we wanted to make sure we could share and yet not make it too horrible. Because I, I just, you know, I'm not, I'm, I'm kind of, I'm kind of like a friend of ours. Mm. I kind of like rainbows and puppy dogs, but <laughs> there's not rainbows and puppy dogs in this one at all. Yeah, it, it, it's a... Uh... <laughs> All the research we've done on it to keep it uh, technically correct we do that on all the books um and so it uh um, some of the stuff we found the the research the uh the tech work we do for the that goes into generating a, a novel like this um was fairly disconcerting and so uh rock said uh, hey look you know uh, we don't want people running screaming from the building to re read this we want to be able to say okay let's let's, let's take this soften this a little bit let's you know uh, and for let them infer thus and such. Uh, let's not get into the gory details because that's that's not going to tell a story. The story is what is important, and so the details have to be there. That's that's true, but they can't be um, so obnoxious that it, it's a it's a turn off to the reader. Yeah, and was that the longest book to take to write? Uh, no, not really. It was just the biggest struggle. It was the back and forth and probably gave us the most arguments. We we um <laughs> we play rock, paper, scissors when we have a disagreement about things that are in a book. I'm very good at rock, paper, scissors. You would think I would win one of those, <laughs> but no. Okay. But no, this 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 book we had some some significant differences of opinion that 
we, we had to really hash out. And so that was hard because that's not how we'd ever done it. Yeah, we just have a comment. That's pretty cool. Rock, paper, scissors. <laughs> you know, and that's what we have to do in life, right? We have to find a solution. And sometimes rock, paper, scissors is a solution. It moves you forward. It gets to the next step, right? The next chapter. So I want to get into your tea, guys, because I love asking all of my guests this question, what their tea is. And some of my guests will be like, well, what is she going for here? So I got these guys to pull a little bit. And I'm going to start with you, Charles, because your tea is tenacity, engaging, and agreeable. So I want to know why you gave me those three words. Well, tenacity, because um, <clears throat> I don't like to give up. You know, I mean... On the uh, on the football field, or in the uh, uh, in the competition shooting, or um, anything that okay, um, I don't want to be called given up. I, I, I said he, he gave up. All right, he kept trying, still got whacked, you know, still got crunched, um, but he didn't give up. I, and that's the way I, I am on on our writing. You know, we uh, you know it's daily. There's got to be effort daily. To be able to substantiate um, the storyline, because uh, it keeps it fresh, it keeps it top of mind, and so the tenacity of, you know, writing on a disciplined schedule is very important. And 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 rocks. Your words were trusted, entre entrepreneurizing. Am I saying it right? No, on entrepreneurial. I thought it was entrepreneurial or uh, entrepreneurial entrepreneurizing I, I i don't think i'm saying it right oh my enterprising enterprise that's right there we go uh see sometimes my words just don't come together and then no, you you're have, fine go ahead and then you have adventuresome so why those three words rocks well trusted i think we've already exhausted that particular one uh enterprising because i think that you have to look at different things to see what is important to you and what you want to take on so for example we all have to work um, well, most of us have to work unless we were born with a silver spoon. I lost my spoon somewhere along the way because I don't have one. Um, uh, and then adventuresome is, you know, you can be enterprising and still try and do something different. But if your heart's in the right place where you're trying to help somebody, sooner or later it's going to come around and come back to you as a positive thing. And so that's kind of why I put those words together, Miss Liz, is because I, I think that they help you. I stretch, um, change, and give back. Well, I just like the word adventuresome because I've never had that word for an A. So I was just like, oh, that's pretty cool, you know, and and agreeable. I never had that word for the A either. So your you're double A's here were like, oh, this is different. Yeah. Never had this before. Yeah. So yeah. <laughs> yeah. first timers, you know what I mean? And I love when new words come to the table because it gives the listeners an audience a, other understanding of words. Right. We just lost it. Mm -hmm. um, and we're going down the wormhole. Technology just does that sometimes. And, you know, some we do that, but we just keep moving along and keep flowing. Uh, but I mean, when I got those words, I was like, yeah, I got new words for my listeners and my listeners can actually understand words because that's what I like doing with T is I like taking the words and I like making people see differently, just like you guys do with your books and your series is you make people look deeper in words, right? And it's like that computer. The, the machine look deeper Think into it, right and understand it like it, until you understand something you you don't move forward you don't understand you just keep judging it you know when i when charles when you gave me the word agreeable i was like hmm you know as a woman agreeable i'm not sure if we like that word a lot i i know i don't i i don't like to agree a lot and a lot of people might oh. think i like to agree but i don't like to agree a lot because i like to question everything i'm okay not, that's interesting though well, why don't you like yeah, to but, agree yeah, yeah, where does that come from i'd love to know this part yeah uh, come on miss liz but I'm, I'm not sure but I, I i like to question everything right before i say yes or no and i give you a direct answer i'm not going to yeah. agree with anyone like if they give me something i'm just like hmm, let me question this let me find out more 
why I need to give you a yes or a no for this. And it's not only relationships that I do this. It's it's everyday life. Even with my children, my children will ask me something. And I'm like, hmm, I don't know. Is there a hidden underlining here that, you know? So the word agreeable really made me step back and look at myself. And I don't know if it's because I'm turning 50 that I'm starting to look at everything differently. But, you know, you start to look at life a little bit deeper uh, as you get older. And and that. Uh, From my point of view, the agreeable was, was not just, okay, I'll, I'll agree. Let's talk. Convince me. And um, I, I can be convinced. I can be. And that it's that, um, I guess that's it's that, that mindset of, um, I'm not always right. Hard to believe. I mean, you know, being male and in Texan. Uh, but uh, it's important to be able to say, right answer. Are you looking for the truth? And, and we're, I'm back, we're back to our, the fundamentals of, well, if that's true, then perhaps I need to be agreeable to understand that point of view. Um, and it's... It, it figures in very heavily into how we write because when we get finished, you can't tell who wrote what. It's a story. It's single voice, and that agreeableness um, has to be earned. Agreed. Uh, that, that, that that's a fact. But um, it also has to have that um, the flavor of a uh, you know this is well thought out. This was debated. We have agreement. We move on. There, see, you just used the word that I was trying to think of, Charles. Debating. I, I like a debate. I don't like somebody that just comes to me and wants a yes or no, or wants me to just agree because they think they're right. And it's not because I think I'm right. It's because I want to know. I want to dig a little deeper, right? I'm that person that wants to dig. I, I want to understand why you want this or why you're asking me this or why you want me to look at something. Um, especially with my oldest daughter, we use music when we want to express our emotions or kind of say, mom, you know what? Something's really bugging me right now. Listen to this song. Cause she knows that I listen to the words. I listen to the lyrics. Right. And it's that debate back and forth. Okay. So you sent me this song. Well, maybe there's another song. Let me try this song with you to see if I'm understanding what you're trying to tell me, you know, but it gives you that insight of taking a time to understand the situation understand what you're reading, understand what you're, what's coming at your table, you know? Um, and it, and I think that's why I really like that word agreeable, Charles, is because it made me go, whew, this is interesting, you know? And like Rox, right away, you were like, where's this come from? You know, you wanted that conversation and the conversation kept going on the one word agreeable. And that's what I'm saying is three words can have a good conversation. You can have an in-depth conversation with three words and understand somebody's story and understand why they go and it comes right back to trust trusting the situation you know and stepping back and saying okay well let me hear your point of view on this it's like the rock paper scissor right it, it, it comes all back to the full circle and and that's what i i want the listeners to understand is that t comes to a full circle it comes to who brings you what you bring to the table how you serve at the table what you write what you read what you speak you know, it all comes together. And this is what I really liked about your series and that. And then when I seen the trusted friend and lovers, I was like, whoa, okay, this is different. <laughs> this is taking us to the right side instead of the left side. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, yeah. and then your word rocks was the adventuresome. We don't hear that word adventuresome. We hear about adventure, but we don't hear about the adventuresome. So that's more about the person. Do you accept things? And it kind of goes back to your agreeable to it to a point. Um, do you accept things that people say? You know, you have to go to Banff because it is the most beautiful place in the world. I don't disagree that Banff is an absolutely beautiful place to go. It's stunning. However, the adventuresome side of me says, I want to go see it myself. Because it may be, but I need to make that judgment myself. So adventuresome for me is is taking a risk, finding my own way to an end, and um, and learning along the way. That's adventuresome for me. Well, and I think it comes down to writing, right? You take that risk. 
of writing a story and, and hoping that the readers understand it and say like, oh, this is interesting. Let me get the next book. Let me get the next book, you know? And when you're doing series, it's got to be hard because you, you got to keep the storyline going, right? Yep, absolutely. And that's why we kept the series at 12 and then went on to this next thing. And now we're kind of, you know, we're kind of looking at what, what are we going to do after the trilogy? Yeah. Now, one, one of the things <laughs> we will maintain is that uh, leaving uh, writing cliffhangers is is naughty. Ah. Um, so we don't do it. We make, I mean, if we only get you for one book, you're going to enjoy it because that story is contained. It's part of the series. That's true. And there, yeah, there's a, a new threat that's kind of hinted at towards the end of each book to kind of give you an idea that, hey, there's something else looming on the horizon because there always is when the bad guys are in, 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 um, in play. And so what uh, we do consciously try to make sure that each book is standalone and enjoyable for its, uh, in, uh, within that theme that we've chosen. So we have a question here from Twitter. <clears throat> Are all your books short stories? No, no, not at all. In fact, um, they're all novels. Um, the Enigma series itself, they're all techno thriller novels, uh, which is also action and adventure. Um, the Enigma Heirs trilogy, those are full-fledged novels. Um, the prequel to the Enigma series, which we wrote I want to say four years ago, five years ago. Yeah. Um, it's called a novella. So it's it's four or five times as big as a short story, but not as big as a full-fledged novel. So um, does that help answer that question from Twitter? And thank you for the question. Uh, yeah. And all, all they have is RB from Twitter. So I'm not sure what RB is, but I'll reach out to Demrox and I'll let them know that. I didn't I didn't do it. My initials are RB too. So, you know, we have <laughs> right? something in common. <laughs> Well, that, that's it, right? We have all these usernames and stuff like that. So sometimes we can't even figure out who, who's writing in, right? So, but I, I do appreciate the questions coming in. Thank you guys. Um, so do you guys have any plans for any vacation or anything? Or you guys are just going to write, 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 write? No, writing is always, even when we go on vacation, if we do any travel, the PC goes with us. And it's uh, usually it, uh, there's a couple of hours a day that go into it because it's part of our discipline uh, for crafting a, a chapter or two or a new idea or hey let's uh, let's do this uh, uh, this kind of a theme. Um, we've even experimented with um, science fiction as a short story. We use short stories to be able to test um, our, uh, our writing abilities and capabilities in uh, and put them into a you know short story contest feedback like okay hey they really love this or like um yeah don't give up the day job charles <clears throat> so um we got those two extremes you know when we, when we try stuff like that but it's um uh it's easy to be uh inspired when you're traveling and uh, on vacation uh like what a great idea I, I, you know i was at uh, hanford uh, uh, washington one time like Saw this uh, this uh, you know display of the uh, uh, World War II's uh, biggest uh, monument to uh, um, nuclear uh, nuclear fission, and that's where it was built um, in 1943 to 45. Um, did not know that, and that actually found its way into uh, book number seven, where the bad guys are trying to get free information to be able to build their own atomic weapon or extortion. And and Charles and, and Sandy, they are going on the holiday soon. And um, they're going to go to the East Coast and actually do some research. We're avidly working to finish um, the Ransom Enigma, which is our next contribution to the Magnolia Bluff Crime Chronicles <clears throat> before he goes on vacation at the end of May. Hmm. So we're we're on like, you know. So, it's, it's, so it's like, yeah. let's go, let's go, let's go. Let's go. Yeah. 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 If you've ever seen a hamster on, on a wheel, that, that's kind of what we're doing. Is that what you're doing? Oh, Pretty cool. Much, yeah, yeah. yeah. I like that. So uh, I, you, I asked you guys to give me a word to describe yourselves. And Charles, you gave me reliable. And Rox, you gave me trust. You use a lot of trust in a lot of things, Rox. Is, is, so Rox, let's start with you this time. I, the word trust. Where, why that word? Um, you know, I guess my whole life, uh, from from my professional career to my young career, 
I've always tried to trust in people. And unfortunately, I, I can probably count more times than not that people have broken my trust for one reason or another. And yet I keep carrying that flag down the field going, OK, trust still works. I swear it still works. And maybe I just need to to try it a little bit harder. Uh, maybe I need to be a little more honest, a little more open. And that doesn't mean with somebody else. It could be just with myself. Um, you know, I I I, ex I accept people to deliver on what they say. I trust them to be honest. If they're not, then to me that breaks the trust. And so, you know, maybe that's wrong thinking, but I've had that happen multiple times. Um, so yes, I do use trust a lot. Sorry. I'm sorry. No, I'm and, and, and that's, a, that's a good thing because, you know, and this is why I get words from my guests is because we need to understand words. Why? Right. You said that you, you've had more people break your trust than actually trust. And I think you having that flag still there gives hope to other people that have been stabbed in the back a lot and betrayed and words weren't, you know, the actions didn't match. Mm -hmm. And here you're saying, you know what, there, there's still that flag. Let's, let's wave the flag and let's trust the next person, even though all of these other people have broken that trust. Right. Um, trust is a hard word for me, Rox. Uh, I'm not going to lie. So when I seen that, I was like, yeah, there's been a lot of broken trust in order to trust. Well, you know, you can hang on to people that break their promises and break your trust and do those things and you become bitter and, um, you know, unhappy. You know, my long range goal in life was to be happy from the time I was like four when my parents said, what do you want to be? All I wanted to be was happy. And so I think that's why I keep carrying that flag. So, you know, eventually if somebody breaks my trust, I go, OK, they're not somebody I really want in my sphere. And so, but that doesn't mean that the next person doesn't get a chance. Yeah. You know, I can't, I can't hold the sins of person A against the sins of person B. That's not fair. So I try and clean slate, clean slate. <laughs> yeah, just sketch, you know, turn the, yeah, just sketch up right now. Shake the yachty sketch, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, wrong line. Let's get into your word, Charles. Reliable. Why that? Reliable word? is. Uh, uh, it's very personal. It's uh, reliable is uh, when your your daughter calls up, scared, frightened. Dad, I need help. That to me, uh, or uh, the wife calls and says, "I don't know how to do this. I'm in trouble." A reliable factor. I'm, I'm that. I'm that male there. That the uh, and when Rock says, "I can't get to this. Can you do it?" That that says that uh, the Charles is reliable, and that is something I want to project. Um, if you get, if you give me, if you give me something, you need something. You need that help. Um, it's sort of the uh, the opposite side of trust. You're reliable. I can reliably go call Dad. I can reliably call Charles. I can reliably be someplace on time to pick up a person at the airport at 5 a.m. because I said I would. And that is very important as a human being, as a professional, and um, it's what I project. And I hope that people understand that. So. And I don't give that just to anybody. Well, it's trust too, right? You don't just give it to anybody. Yeah. You give them a chance. <laughs> but it kind of brings you guys together, right? The opposite attracts in yeah. order to write together, right? Because one is reliable and one is trust. And both of it is a personal personal connection, right? Is I, mm -hmm. I, I can trust you because you're reliable. And Charles is like, I trust you because you trust me. You know what I mean? Uh, it's the balance. And sometimes we need that opposite attract to balance each other out. So we're almost at the end here. I, I want to get any final words or any new books that are coming out, what we should be looking for, where we can find all these goodies uh, and what you guys are up to in the next year. Well, as Rock said, we have uh, a new cozy mystery that we uh, we have committed to. 
and we're reliably on track to be able to deliver for August the uh, uh, the Enigma no ransom ransom Enigma. Um, it's a great story that uh, it, it's a uh, we're, we're putting lots of twists and, and the turns in it and um, teasers and it's a uh, it's a fun exercise uh, and it takes uh, two of our favorite characters that, that we use in that uh, that particular series and exercises them on the uh, the one last uh, one last go round. What do you do when you're up against the wall and your your champion is in a coma? Yeah, so it, it, it does have some uh, hold your breath things. It's got some excitement. It's got some action adventure. Um, and it's got that frying pan somewhere in that in that story. You just never know when that, that frying pan's coming out. Yeah. Um, so we have that that we're working on. We um, have the next book for Enigma Airs, which was targeted for January, February of 25, um, that we'll be working on after that. Um, we have the audio book for uh, Enigma Forced that will be out in the summertime. We don't take a lot of breaks. You know, I, we don't take a lot of breaks. Well, we don't because we're having so much fun. I mean, this exactly. is, I mean, um, what, what's, what's your, your phrase? We're having so much fun. We probably ought to be arrested. Yeah, okay. something like that. Yeah. So, so, I mean, it's, it, people can come to enigmaseries.com or enigmabookseries.com. Both of them work. You can <laughs> order books right off of our website if if we sign printed books, we will ship them free in the continental United States. Um, you can order them from Amazon, Barnes and Noble. Um, the eBooks are only available on Amazon. Um, most of the audio books are available almost everywhere. There's mm. only three that are only available on um, Audible at this juncture in time. And you said that you, you've got uh, you know an international uh, complexion of a. Uh, of uh, uh, listeners, uh, we are also on um, in uh, the uh, Amazons for the UK, Canada, Australia, Italy, Spain, France, Germany. Um, we like seeing our properties out there for people to uh, consume, um, and their uh, um, and their chosen um, country. So um, we're available. I promise you. And if there's any, you know, book clubs out there that really want to have some authors talk to them, you know, we can certainly handle things like Zoom meetings if you're not local to us. Um, but we love to work with book clubs. Um, several of the more recent books do have questions that you can leverage in a book club and kind of talk about the stories um, or we can provide them for the earlier books for those who want them. So we just like readers and we like to get their point of view and we really appreciate any reviews we get. So thank you. Yeah. So is there, is there a spot on the website where they can leave a feedback for any of the books? Sure. Um, there's no, no, they can email us, but all of the reviews and things like that would go to BookBub or Goodreads or Amazon uh, rather than us. But if they want to send us a note and talk to us or they want to maybe ask if we'll provide an audio code for an audiobook, they can certainly email us at authors at enigmaseries.com and we'll we'll talk to them. There's free downloads out there too, and samples of all the stories. And the and the free and free books are on your website as well, right? On under the free store, I believe. There's free stuff under there. Yeah. Yes. And well, we'd appreciate any feedback on the book trailers that we have built uh, by a a very uh a uh, very ambitious uh, group out of uh, California, Front Rose Production. They do excellent stuff for uh, for the book trailers, and, and uh, I'm always interested to know, you know, what people think about those uh, those two minute snippets. You know, are they, uh, you know, can you help us get it uh, get into the uh, uh, the movie theaters with it? Uh, that's uh, I'm always I'm always pushing for that. So, <laughs> yeah. so it, yeah, on YouTube we do have the Enigma series that you can go to and get all of our book trailers and other other M mp files awesome well it was a real pleasure having you guys back i always like having you guys back 
uh, you know, and I can't wait to see what comes out of the next series and all of that. And I'd love to give you guys some feedback on some of these trailers because I'm always, I always like looking at trailers because I'm trying to do that with my books back there as well as try to bring something up. Right. Uh, but yeah. again, thank you guys for joining me and coming back. Uh, thank you to the viewers and listeners. Thank you for the questions. If you guys would like to just send me a private message, let me know what your name is. Uh, and, and I can connect you with Roxy. Uh, rocks and Charles and, and and maybe you'll get some goodies from them so if you guys can send me your names I really appreciate that and again I want to thank everybody uh, for all the listeners we will be back in June Miss Liz is taking off a month uh, so there will be no live tea times during the month of May but you will be seeing rescheduled tea times from season one two three four and five that will be playing on Miss Liz's Facebook page uh, share those out, check them out. There's going to be little clip bits. Miss Liz has scheduled everything in. So in, in that month, you will be seeing tea times. You'll be seeing familiar faces. So I'm not running away. I'm coming back, but I will be back in June. So until then, I want to wish everybody a safe weekend. Stay yourself and keep serving your tea out there to the world. Thank you, Miss Liz. You're terrific. Thank you, Liz. Appreciate it. Enjoy your, uh, uh, your 